hi everyone welcome to my video today I'm going to show you how to make a poncho on the Cento 48 needle machine so let's get started so this is the yarn that I am using to make this project so it's a stitch studio by Nicole pound of stitches and it is a medium for okay so let's get started so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to cast on with some waste yarn so we'll just bring the white needle back to the front and you just cast on like this doing the back and forth motion like this So to make this poncho what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a series of tubes and then we will stitch them together. So for your waist yarn you're going to need probably between five to ten rows of waist yarn because you don't want it to come undone before you stitch the end of your tube together so I'm just going to do roughly about ten rows of waist yarn So now I'm going to join my main colour and I'm just going to go the other side of the needle where the tail is because I don't want to be left with a hole. And I'm just going to pop it into the middle tension gauge and reset my counter. So with your little tail ends here, you don't want to tie that into a knot. You just want to leave that as, as that is because you want to be able to take off your waist yarn afterwards. So that looks like it's all knitting nice. So what we're going to do now is we're going to knit up to row 96 and then we're going to pop in a little stitch marker. So I'll see you at row 96. Okay, so I've reached um, 96 rows. So I'm just going to, I've just gone past the white needle. So I'm just going to place my stitch marker there and then on the opposite side. So I'll just be very gentle as I go around. So I'm just going to hold that in place as we go past the stitch marker. Okay. 
Okay, so we've now cleared the stitch markers. So now we need to knit to 250 rows. So I'll see you when we get to 250 rows. Okay, so we've reached the 250 rows. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to cut our yarn. And we're going to cast off with waist yarn. So just before I do that, I'll just uh, give you a little tip of when you're doing a lot of rows like we've just done, is you want to just keep rolling your work in on itself and that will just help to weigh it down so that you don't get as many drop stitches. So I'm just going to cast off with the waist yarn now. So we'll just pop that the other side of that. So you can see where that yarn is and then your waist yarn is on the same needle. So the same thing as the start, we want to have at least about five to ten rows of waist yarn. You definitely don't want any less than five rows because you don't want your work to come undone. And it's best to do it in a contrasting colour so that when you're actually joining the tubes together you can actually see your stitches more easily. So I'll just do about 10 rows. Then once you've done that, you just chop it off and throw it in the middle and then just wind it round and the work will just pop off by itself. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got the work off the machine, we're just going to unravel it. And you can see where we put our stitch marker. So here we have our tube. So I'm just going to, before we do that, make sure it's where my stitch marker is. We want the tube to be all in line with that. So we have stitch marker on the side and stitch marker on the side. Okay, so now I'll show you how to close up the end of your tube. So you just want to get a crochet hook and you pop it through your stitch, grab the one next to it and pull it through. Pop it through your stitch and pull it through. They're really easy to see when they're in a contrasting colour. So we're just going to work our way all the way to the end, just closing it up like this. Okay, so I've closed up both of my ends now and this is what it looks like. 
So now we're just going to remove the waste yarn. Now with your waste yarn, it, it pays to actually keep it. So just once you remove it, just roll it back up so that you can use it again for future projects. And there we go. That's what it looks like once you've pulled out your waist yarn. Okay, so I'll just do the same to the other tube. Okay, so I've made six tubes. So what we're going to do is we're going to join three tubes together. And that's going to make one side of the poncho. And then we'll join three tubes together on the other side. Okay, so how we do this is what we do is we put the two tubes, two tubes together like this. And then we're just going to poke our crochet hook through, grab a stitch and poke through on the other side and pull it through. Then we're going to skip a stitch. So we go every second stitch and pull that through, skip a stitch and pull it through. So it's a little bit like how you join the ends together when you're taking off your waist yarn. It's a little bit like that. So we're just going to work away all the way down to the end of the tubes and then join the other one together after that. And I'll see you when I've joined my tubes together. Okay, so I'm back. So what I've done is I've joined three tubes together and then I've placed that on top of the other three tubes. So all together, we've actually got six tubes. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to create the neck opening. So what I've gone ahead and done is if you remember from the start, we were placing stitch markers. So I've already crocheted together this side and I'm about to join the other side. But one thing you might want to check is um, your neck opening because with these machines, they're all slightly different. So what would be right for me and my head might not quite be right for your head. So it's advisable that when you see your stitch markers, if you can just say bobby pin them together like that and just test that you can actually get your head through. You should be fine because they are quite stretchy, but it's best to check. And you might want a larger neck opening than what I'm actually having here. This is gonna be a nice winter thick poncho for me. Um, so you might just wanna to check to that your neck opening is what you like before you join it all together. So another thing to bear in mind as well is that when you're crocheting together your tubes, you might not always have a tail end like this to secure it. So what I tend to do is when I get to the end is I just grab a loose bit of thread and then I pull it through and then I pull it through again and I just create a knot and then I just tie that and secure it. But what I'll also do is um, after I've finished it all is I will go ahead with a needle and thread 
and I will actually sew them together to make sure that it's not going to come undone when we actually wash it. Okay, so I've just tested this before I started filming this and I'm happy with my neck opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to join from this side all the way down to the end and I'm going to crochet that together the way we've joined the rest of the tube. Okay, so I'll see you when I finish that. Okay, so I've joined everything together now and what I've done is I crocheted around the neck line here. So I've just done a single row of single crochet just all the way around the collar area here. So that would just help give it a bit more of a professional look and also it doesn't come apart as easily if you crochet around the edges. So it is, if you're gonna continue to use little knitting machines or even bigger knitting machines, it is a good idea, I've said before, to learn how to crochet because it does give it a better look and it, it makes things look a little bit more finished off. So what I've done around the rest of the poncho as well is I've also done a single row of the blue all the way around the, the rest of the poncho just to tie it all in. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. So I'll just, I tend to, you can wear it both ways. So you can wear it sort of, whether it's straight across like this, or you can wear it sort of side on, which the way I tend to prefer to wear it so that then the poncho falls into like a diamond shaped. Like this. Okay, so that's it. So please like and subscribe to my video if you find this helpful and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.